Lisa, I see you there. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. Okay, so let me uh, just do my housekeeping really quickly. Um, <clears throat> guys, I want to let you know that Melissa Armo is the founder and owner of Mush, which is an, it's an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. She created the method she teaches, which is unique to the stock swoosh. It's called, uh, it's, a, it's a strategy called the Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money on the stock market. I know she's going to give you more background. And without further ado, um, Melissa, you like to see the um, questions on the fly. Am I right? Yes, I do. All right. <laughs> Let me know if you can see For my about three seconds screen. and you're back. Wonderful. Can you see my screen? <laughs> yes, I can. I'm going to mute myself and you take it away. And thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome, everyone. What an exciting day to be trading. Right now, the stock swoosh, we're long Apple, we're long NVIDIA. Today, I'm going to talk about gaps. What happened today? NVIDIA gapped up, Apple gapped up, the market gapped up. And we're going to talk about today some shorts, too. But really, we're going to talk about trading momentum. We're going to talk about making money. All of these things are really important. As Sherry said, I appear on national television. I'm actually on TV on Friday because there's a big unemployment number Friday morning and we do not know what that number is gonna be, but the market will react. And it could have a big move up. It could have a big move down. We'll wait and see. But anyways, I talk about the stock market on TV. I talk about the economy and I also trade in a live trading room, which I run every day. And I teach a class once a month and the class for June is actually this weekend, which I'll go, I will go over at the end of today's presentation. If you have questions, you can plop them in the room there. I'll see them as we go along. Or you can email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So if you're here today, you probably are interested in trading. You may be interested in trading on the side. You may be interested in trading full-time, part-time. When I started trading, I wanted to do it full-time. I actually was doing mortgages, and then I wanted to replace my mortgage job with a different career because the mortgage industry had changed. So I was looking to replicate what I was doing as far as the income and the freedom that I had, which was at that time, it was a number of years ago, but at that time it was, I was working from home. And again, trading is something that you can do from home, but you've got to have goals. And then you need a plan of action to achieve those goals, okay? So everyone wants financial independence. Everyone wants to make a lot of money, but a lot of people decide they want to trade and have absolutely no plan of action to get there. So that's a problem because otherwise, if you don't have a plan of action, what are you going to do? You're going to end up gambling, okay? And that's what a lot of people do and why they're not successful. Now, I put the stats in here for year to date. This is not through actually the last week. I closed the room last week. We we're off for the Memorial Day holiday. But through the 24th of May, uh, this is risking an average of $3,000 risk per trade. Again, this is through May 24th. These are all the day trades I called in the live room. Most of the trades are actually shorts. We actually shorted Disney today and we went long Apple. But stats for this year so far through the 24th are $468,247. So we've had a good start to this year. You would need a margin account to do these trades. These are not options trades. These are day trades on margin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And again, this, these stats for the options newsletter are not through the end of May. I have to update this as well. But I risk more my options trades. And why? I like to do bigger positions. I like to hold overnight. And of course, we've been trading NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA stock splits in a couple of days. So the price of the NVIDIA trades and the options will be a lot less and more people will be trading than the volume will probably go up but so far year to date with an average risk of eight thousand dollars per options trade i'm up over 1.2 million for the year again this isn't this isn't through the end of may i have to update this but so far this year we have had a roaring start to the year why uh one of the reasons that i'm successful is i've been doing this for a long time and nothing else so i only trade gaps i'm mostly short but i don't do anything else I'm not doing Forex and Bitcoin and this thing and that thing and futures. I only trade gaps. Every single day I look for one thing or maybe two, maybe two. Like today we did two things, but that's rare. Most of the time I do one ticker symbol a day. And again, most of the time we like to short. So summer is a great time to trade gaps. It's summer in New York City. That's where I live. 
And it's actually a gorgeous day today. Kind of hot, actually. We're supposed to get rain later, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit dewy out. But it's the time of the year where you want to be outside. You want to enjoy your life. You do not want to sit in front of a computer for six and a half hours a day. And again, particularly in the summer, a lot of people that are trying to wait for the market direction end up losing money because they're waiting till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock Eastern time to figure out what the market's going to do. The trains that I take, the ones that I do, I don't need the market. I don't need the market. I'm looking for something specific where I don't need to have to worry about what the market's doing. And again, any questions, you can plop it in the room and I'll see as I'm going along. Anyways, if you've been thinking about trading and you need a strategy and you want to trade the market and you don't have a lot of time to trade every day, you might want to think about what I do because I'm in and out of these trades very, very quickly. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, okay? And again, sometimes you can hold something longer, but most of the trades were in and out between 9.30 and 10. So if you don't have a lot of time to devote to trading, you might want to think about trading gaps with me. Also, if you love your job, you love your career, you love what you do, but you don't have enough money coming in to cover the cost of inflation, high interest rates on your credit cards, whatever you have going on right now, you can trade and make money on the side. And actually options are a great way to do that because you don't have to be in the room every day and you can trade options. If you're trading right now and you don't have a strategy and you need a way to pick the best stock to trade, something that's going to move or have a big move, a momentum move, I call it, then you may want to consider the strategy that I'm trading again, which is based on gaps. So if you want to trade, but you don't know where to start, this is a good lecture for you to listen to, to talk about what I do, to see if you have any interest and maybe want to learn what in fact I do. And again, learning is extremely important in any profession. I don't know why people think trading is different. It really is no different. I don't know why people think they can make money in the stock market without learning what to do first. It's something to do with, I think, the idea about giving money to a financial advisor, but that's not the same thing. That's not what we do when we day trade. And in fact, it makes zero sense when you think about it. You're not gonna make money in the stock market if you don't know what to do. If you wanted to become a doctor, you go to medical school, you would learn, you would get trained. If you wanna be an accountant, if you wanna, become a CPA. If you're a nurse, you go to nursing school. If you want to become an electrician or a plumber, you go to trade school and then you learn how to fix things. Everything you do that you have a specific field, you will have to go to school and learn how to do it. And becoming a professional trader, even if it's part time where you're trading your own money, it's no different. Okay. Learning is extremely important in trading. And again, while it's easy, you could say, well, you follow someone else. Learning what to do is critical. And it's important in every career. It's something that people don't understand. I don't know why. It's no great mystery to me, really, why people lose money. They don't know what to do. Okay, they don't know what to do. How did I know to short Disney today? Because I have a method to determine that Disney was a short. How did I know to go long Apple? Because I have a method to determine that Apple was a long. And that's, that's very important, okay? Because otherwise, if you're looking for the market trying to read the market direction, you're all over the place upside down and getting it wrong a lot because sometimes the market doesn't have any direction or fakes you out. So if this is something for you, you have to ask yourself, first of all, do you wanna train? Do you even wanna do this in the first place? Then you have to ask yourself, how much time do you have to devoting to trading? Do you have mornings free? Do you have afternoons free? Do you have time to do options? Are you working from home? Where are you right now? Are you in an office? You're on the road? Then you need to ask yourself if you're willing to invest the time and money to learning how to do it now so that you can be where you want to be financially in the future. Again, future meaning could be a month from now, could be by Labor Day, could be by July 4th. It depends how long it takes you to pick up the concepts, do it, start trading, open an account, and start making the money. But it's really about finding a strategy that meets your needs. You must have a strategy, like I said, to begin with to be successful. For me, my strategy is based on gaps, okay? So let's talk about what is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple, stocks gap most every single solitary day, but not every gap is a good gap, or what I call a golden gap. I'm looking for the gaps that are predictable. How do I do that? I use my rating system, okay? Now let's take a look at Microsoft here. Microsoft had a gap. This is last week, stock closed here, gap down. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Microsoft closed up here, ran 429 and change at four o'clock Eastern time, boom. Open in the morning here, under 425, fell. You could have shorted it. You could have done a put. A put is an option where you're shorting basically with a fixed risk, 
okay? And again, this fell $10 plus. Continued fell, boom. That was the 30th and the 31st last week, okay? That was Microsoft, but this is a gap. So it's really about working smarter, not harder, because if you can take a trade like Microsoft, again, short it, whether it's 100 shares or 500 shares or 1,000 shares, you short a stock with 1,000 shares at 430, and it drops to 425, you have 1,000 shares, what do you make? $5,000, okay? So again, your size is determined by the size of your account with your cash account. Whether you do it as a day trade on margin or an options account, but it's the idea that you would get a big move, that you would know that Microsoft was a short in the first place, okay, that it fell. Now we did this one here too. Again, this is shop. This was back earlier in May. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Stock gaps here, closes here, gaps down. Shop closed here around 77 and change, open in the morning around 63 and change, open dropped. So you were shorted it. And also you could have done a put, which is what we did. And it went dun, boom, boom, and it fell. Again, how do you make money shorting? Price has to drop. Again, where's the momentum? To the downside, to the downside. The only way you're gonna make money in this is if you short it. And again, whether you do a put or a day trade, but we did put. So my options newsletter gets sent out Get sent out to your email. I sent this out at 10, 13 in the morning. If you're in the newsletter, you got the shop $60 put. So you would just buy the put and then you would sell it. And again, you're selling it into the momentum. The cost of this I thought was pretty cheap. It was $1.05 for one, okay? Again, I risk a higher risk, sold it to, profit was 90% return on investment or $7,600. What if you took less? What if you risked 1,050, took 10 shit contracts, which is essentially 1,000 shares, Again, a, an option, you can set up a cash account. It's a cheaper way of doing this versus shorting this at 60 some dollars a share. Okay, profit was 950, this is a good trade. Again, anything between 50% and 100% is a good, solid trade. Again, when you're doing an option, you have a fixed risk when you're holding overnight. A lot safer than, for example, doing a swing trade. But again, the purpose of this, let me go back here to the daily is, that I can predict that shop is a going to drop. So again, then you say, okay, it's gonna fall, so we're gonna short it, or a put, which is a short, okay? Any questions here so far? So again, it's finding the good ones. It's finding the picks, finding something that you're gonna be able to predict, predict the direction and something that's gonna have a decent move to pay you. Again, which I consider a dollar more, 90% return on investment. That's a decent move, okay? And we were talking about Disney. This is, uh, this is Disney through yesterday. Disney fell down in here today. It was just a nice trade. It was a nice short. We did this back in here, 515. We did the Disney here. You see how it fell? Boom. We did the 102 putts, which we entered actually here on the 7th. Dropped, rallied. Then we got the drop. So again, we fell through the strike, through the strike here in the Disney. So we did the 102 puts, but I did them early, called it out for the Friday expiration. These were so dirt cheap, 40 cents for these Disney puts, sold at a dollar, 150% return on investment. And again, you could have done 10 of these. You could have spent $400, could have spent $400 and you would have made 600 bucks. So this was a good, solid, nice trade. People say you have to have all this money. No, if you don't want to do options, if you don't want to do day trades on margin, which actually I think this is a mid-price point stock, but if you don't, you could do options. And again, this is a really good price for something at 40 cents for one contract. And again, we're talking about momentum. We were talking about shorting. This is the push, boom, drop. But we were in it before the drop. So again, the genius of my system is that I can predict with the gap that it is going to fall. So again, what is a gap? Disney closed here, gap down. Disney closed up here around 116 and changed. Gap down here in the morning around 107, open, fell. And again, we did the 102 puts. We did a couple other ones too at uh, higher strikes. But to see that that would go to 102, fall and break 102 is, is a really nice call. And again, that's why we bought those on the 7th. They were so dirt cheap. Because at the time we got them, the stock was well over 106. See it? Any questions?
questions on options or shorts as I'm talking here. Anyways, one of the other reasons to trade gaps is, again, a great risk to reward payout. We're not scalping. Um, I don't do anything with Delta. I rate the gap using my rating system, determine the directional bias, and then I buy the put or I buy the call. I'm not worried about any of those other things. I've taken a trade on a Monday that expires on a Friday that goes and is a positive trade. Might take till Friday to go. So I don't do any of those other things or worry about anything else. My whole concept base is based on my gap strategy, which is a 26 point rating system that I use to determine how I wanna trade it, whether I wanna do it as an option, whether I wanna do it as a day trade, or many times whether or not I wanna do it as both, which we did at Disney actually. And we actually did an Apple. So we went long Apple, um, as a day trade today, and we were we were in Apple calls yesterday, and it's and it's going today. It's a really nice trade, actually. So again, the idea is my is not about anything other than the gap itself. So again, reasons to trade gaps are the great risk to reward payout, quick profits, fast profit, fast profits. I consider if an option goes in a week, that's fast. Like that's pretty fast, fast to me. So I mean, again, when I'm doing something. If I'm doing a day trade, five, 10, 15 minutes, a half an hour is quick. If I'm doing an option, I think if it goes the same day, it's great. If it takes a couple of days, that's fine. But it basically, I'm doing something for a week, okay? And again, the whole idea is to get you one focus. You're focusing one stock pick, one direction, and you don't need the market. And that's the best case scenario. Because again, if you need the market, you're getting chopped up to bits and pieces market's still in a range, still in a very, very, very tight range, okay? So again, what's another reason to trade gaps? It helps you find momentum. Momentum is important because if you get momentum in something, you can make money, whether you have a small size or a large size, it doesn't really matter. And again, the moves happen fast versus a string trade where if you buy the stock, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, or it takes weeks and weeks and weeks for it to go, okay? Now, the room was closed last week, like I said. I told you today we did Apple, and uh, we did Disney short and Apple long, but I closed the room last week for the Memorial Day holiday. The week before, this is the last full week, we made money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I closed the room for the Memorial Day, and the total with an average risk of $3,000 per day trade in this one week was $11,000 for trading for four days. And again, you can risk more, you can risk less. So we're gonna go over all the trades here for that particular week. We did Google, we actually went long Google. This was on the 20th here. Take it up, boom. We went long, stock close here, gapped up, rallied, and we did it. We got in, got out. Entry was 177.60, exit was 178.40, risk 3200, made 3200, in and out. Again, I'm trying to get out of my day trades really, really quickly, really, really fast, okay? Most of the time. Because I don't wanna be worried about economic moves, data, the Fed has a meeting next Wednesday. That's in the afternoon. You don't want to have to worry about that or things affecting your trades. Then we did AMD on the 21st. This fell actually yesterday. You could have shorted this yesterday. Funny as it seems, this was a gap down. It was a little baby, but it was good. We did it. And she was 164. Boom, dropped. Try to pull a dollar out of it, 70 cents in and out. We exited at 162.30, made 17.50. And again, hard to believe we made money shorting this here with a baby bar, but we did. Again, getting the right entry is key. And again, fast, fast, fast. And again, this was the week before Memorial Day. So this week even, now today, today is a really good day. But I mean, you gotta be careful. You gotta baby step it some of these days here into the next holiday. Remember, the market's closed for Juneteenth in a week and a half, I think it is. Less than two weeks. July 4th, the market's closed. So the next earnings season starts after the July 4th holiday when we have like 100, 200 gaps every single day or more. Days like now, we're at the end of earnings season. There's an earnings tonight, for example, in Lulu. You can watch Lulu tonight. I might trade Lulu tomorrow. Will I do it? I don't know. Will it rate good? I don't know. Will it be up? Will it be down? I don't know. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. But I have a method to determine after I see the gap whether I want to go long it or whether I want to short it. 
So that's very positive. 522, we did target. Again, stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed up here around 156 and change. Gap down here in the morning around 140. Rallied. We shorted it. Got the drop. Got in. Got out. Done. Boom. We were done quick and fast in the morning. Made more than a dollar. Entry was 142.40. Exit at 141.15. Profit was 31.25. And again, this is a this. You would have to have a margin account to do this. So what is a margin account? You go to the broker and you set it up with a retail broker. You need 25,000 or more, you get four to one margin. With a prop broker, you can get 10 to one margin and open up account with $5,000 minimum. So again, there's many different types of accounts out there or you can open up an options account, set it up as a cash account with two grand. You can't risk $3,500 though. You would be risking 100 or 200 with a small account and then you'd be buying puts, okay? Like we did in the in the shop in the Disney and then we did Disney here right before the holiday we got a beautiful sell-off again this is the Disney here made 29.25 entry was 102.60 and we exited I, I should have held this actually this was a nice nice trade I got out of this too fast it was a really nice trade um, any other questions here so again how do you put together a week how do you put together a month how do you put together a year set goals for yourself you chunk it out you chunk it chunk it chunk it out so many people they trade all day they blow up their account they get all crazy they double down they trade too heavy and things when the added positions that are against them don't do that no one loss should kill anyone unless you've risked too much you're trying to make money consistently that consistency is what's so important to do well one the education because you have to learn what to do if you want to be successful, like in any career, like I said. And two, the consistency is very important. You go back and look at the stats that I have at the beginning here. Some trades I lose, but I'm consistently winning more than I'm losing. And that's how I'm able to put together these kinds of numbers and these kinds of results. If I lose in a trade, it's not the end of the world. I know that the next umpteen trades are going to work, or I might have a big one, okay? So that's the whole point of staying within your body and your brain and thinking things through and again the learning the understanding helps your confidence and your conviction so you don't get all crazy about what you're risking in the money too many people are in their heads about that because they're losing and then quite frankly like i said don't know what to do and then we were closed on friday the 24th so again this was not what i would consider a busy week okay and we will see where we go tomorrow and Friday and then into next week too but my whole point in today's lecture is you need a foundation or to trade and so many traders don't have a foundation the foundation is what the strategy you need an infrastructure for every entry and it's the strategy the strategy is a core reason behind why are you even watching the stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry or trading it at all and entering a stock should not be taken unless the trade is a foundation supporting it sometimes I talk to people who are interested in my class they call me on the phone or email me they tell me they're trading. I say, what are you doing? And then they tell me. And I say, I said, what strategy are you doing? They describe something that's an entry. It's not a strategy. They say, well, I'm going long on blah, 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 uh, moving average or indicator. That's not a strategy. That's an entry. What's a strategy? Why are you taking it? Why are you going long? Why are you going long there? Why are you going long then? Why did you go long today? If you don't have the foundation of the strategy there for the structure, then the entry isn't going to work. You can't do every entry anywhere in every place. I teach entries in my second day of my Golden Gap course. It's a two full day course. Day one is the, is the strategy. Day two is the entries. You can't take my entries in every single thing that gaps or every single strategy. No, it's only when the gap rates per the 26 point rating system. That's the only time you can do the entries at all. You can't do it anywhere, any day, any time. It has to be that foundation of the gap and the rating has to be intact. Okay. So like I was saying, fact is many stocks in any given day have no strategy to trade as a day trade. That is why on most days, stocks do not have a proper entry. There is no strategy. And again, if you're trying to trend trade, you're having a difficult time unless you're doing something that is running up, for example, like NVIDIA, which, which could continue or could be done basically today. The stock splits, like I said, in a couple days. So who knows what happens with it after that? The reality is that it's very difficult, even in a trendy market, which we're in right now, the market's bullish, it stayed bullish, it's still up. I don't know if it continues the rest of the year, but for now, we're very bullish. If, you're, if you need the market for your trains and you're long, that's great, but you're not going to be 
up every day in things that are even in an uptrend or vice versa for stocks that are trending down. So I look for specifically gaps. And again, I prefer to short, but gaps are a strategy or foundation for your trades in the market. When you choose to take a trade, there has to be a support system but so behind why you're taking the trade. And if you don't know what that is, then you probably shouldn't do it. You gotta ask yourself, gaps in the support system are reason why you would enter a position at all. The reason you're choosing to enter a stock with a foundation for your entry should be because the stock is a quality gap. That's what I analyze. That's what I double, triple check myself in the morning. That's my, my pre-checklist. Like I said, if you wanted to be a doctor, a doctor isn't going to go in and do surgery without going through the checklist. The nurse goes through questions in a checklist when she asks you when you check in for surgery. Did you not drink any water or food? Did you do this? Did you do this, Mr. Sir? All of these things. You must take trading seriously if you want to make money on a consistent basis. Otherwise, sometimes you'll win and sometimes you'll lose and you'll be down by the end of the year because you're going to lose way more than you ever win. And again, this whole idea of trading these Reddit stocks and you're going to make hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in one position that you're waiting forever to go is not realistic, is not realistic. What is realistic is that you could actually learn something that works more than it doesn't. What is realistic is that you could actually make money. Now, how much you make is a function of your knowledge and your risk. Again, like I said, I've been doing this for 16 years, a long, long time. But the longer I do it, the better I get. And then obviously, the longer you do it, the better you will get. And then the more money you will make as you grow your account. You know, one of the reasons that I like to do day trades and options is because, again, I can hold options for overnight moves, which we saw today in NVIDIA. We were in NVIDIA calls for a few days. Okay, so we were in NVIDIA 1150 calls and 1200 calls before today's gap up. You can pull up the stock. You can look at it. If we have time, I'll pull it up when, when I'm done here. We were already in it. The nice thing is you can get up in the morning and be in an option. Could be a put, could be a call, and you're up money before you even wake up and you didn't even do anything. And that's what I love about trading options. And what I love about day trades, and again, day trades on margin in the room is I can get in and out and I can make several thousand dollars in five minutes, two minutes, three minutes some days. And I always know where I am by four o'clock when the market closes, I'm flat. I may not be flat in my options. I may be in trades and I don't know where they're going to go the next day, waiting for them to go. So there's pros and cons to doing both, but I like, I like doing both. So again, talking about share size, okay. Again, if you get a dollar move in something and it drops, okay, and you have a thousand shares, you make what a thousand dollars. Now, again, you have to assess your risk. So is it going to cost you $500 to take that trade, a thousand dollars to take that trade? It depends the difference between your entry and your stop. So my share size is not always the same. My risk is the same or close to the same, but I may take different size of my shares or even contracts because the cost of those positions vary. Okay, and the difference between the entry and the exit varies too. Any questions here so far? How are we doing? Everybody again? I am okay. Wonderful. So one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, and you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, okay, this will make you money. And again, it's the idea about having more winners than losers. That's all that you need to focus on. You keep your risk the same or close to the same, and then some trades will be big trades. I always say, well, how do you know? How do you know this one's going to go to the piggy target or the dream target? I don't know till I'm in the trade and I see where it's going to happen. Again, I did call 12, the 1,200 NVIDIA calls last week. Considering how expensive that has been, they were very, very reasonably priced. But I saw that it would get to that number, which I do consider a piggy number or dream target. But again, you know, that's not every single trade. A normal trade is anywhere from 50% to 100%. And if you're having more winners and losers, you're going to make money with that. You're going to make money with that. But again, the day trades, the time of the day that I trade in the morning, if you want to be in the room, is between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, sometimes 10.15. Again, if something doesn't go, I'd say by 10 a.m., 10.15, I'm probably not going to do it. I said, well, I don't have any conviction this is going to go today. It's too late, I say, for example. But the benefits of trading, of day trading, are just countless. Number one, you can be your own boss, which I love. 
I was my own boss when I was doing mortgages and I love that. Number two, you can work half an hour, an hour a day. What if you do options and you don't want to be in the room? Take the trade, get the trade on into the open when I call a trade in the pre-market or in the morning, buy the put or whatever, pay pay a dollar, and then put an immediate limit order or sell order to sell you out at a dollar fifty or two bucks. If it hits, it hits, you're out. You don't have to babysit it. You can check it at lunch. And if it doesn't hit you out, you're still in the trade and it doesn't go, then it cancels out. It's a day order. After four, you'll still be in the trade. You can check it tomorrow morning. So you don't have to babysit options. You have to check them. You can check them at lunch if you're working. Again, you get vacations when you want because you're your own boss. You can make your own schedule. And I tend to close the room around holidays because holidays are a slow time for the market. I actually could have closed the room Monday because Monday was slow. We didn't do anything Monday. When the volume isn't there, holidays, this thing, that thing, you don't want to trade. Okay, then there's times that are ideal to trade. Again, Friday is going to be a big day with the unemployment number. Next Wednesday is going to be a big day with the with the Fed meeting. There are certain days that are more ideal to trade. And again, the idea of trading is you have unlimited income potential and your income is determined only by your experience, okay, which is determines your risk amount and then obviously how much cash you have. And then whether you want to do options or day trades. But you are the one that's going to decide if you want to train. And I think a lot of people, like people come to these lectures, they come to these webinars, and they're great to get bits and pieces of information. No one's going to remember everything I said or everything anybody said this whole day today while this lecture is going on. But you take bits and pieces of information and you say, this kind of makes sense, or I think this makes sense, or this works for my schedule. And then you decide if you want to do it. You know, if you're training and you're losing, nothing's going to change your situation until you change what you're doing. And if you don't have a strategy at all, that could be why you're losing too. Or maybe you're training a strategy that, that doesn't work, okay? And also, you have to want it, okay? At the time that I decided to trade, I really, really wanted a new career. I, I said, this is it. I got to get the hell out of this mortgage job. I can't stand it anymore. It's so stressful. I have no life. I'm working seven days a week. Banks were declining loans. People wanted to buy houses. They get upset with me. It wasn't my fault. The banks would decline them. It was a crazy market. Again, this is back 2007, you know. Things have to change if your life isn't where you want it. And the only way that's going to happen is you. You making the change. Same thing if you're trading right now and you're losing and you're not making money. I just had somebody, she saw me, a lady that emailed me. She saw me on Fox two weeks ago. She said, I wish I would have seen you before today. I just blew up my account last week. I forget what she did or what she was long something and then it fell off a cliff and she blew up her account. You know, again, if you're not making money, there's a reason you're not making money. You're doing something that doesn't work. And it's just as simple as that. And you have to kind of come to that, you know, come to Jesus moment where you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know that some people are making money trading. I know that people can do it. I know that something's got to work. And then you got to figure out what that thing is. Instead of just thinking about it, thinking about it, and then like beating yourself up about it. Sometimes people beat themselves up all the time about how they lose money. Why? It's not your fault that you lost money. The thing that you did isn't working. But it is your fault if you keep doing it and keep losing money and don't do something else or decide to learn a different system. Then you can blame yourself because that's just crazy. You're never going to change your results of what you're doing if you don't learn to do something different. Okay. Anyways, my system is called the Golden Gap Rating System. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move on the day, which I want to get. We're getting that in Apple. Uh, Disney had that today, too. Early confirmation of the bias in the move between 930 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So, again, you can use a system for day trading, swing and options trading. I'm just doing day trading and options trading myself, but you can use it for swing trading, too. And you can use it for analyzing the market, the market gaps most days. And again, how much you make is a function of how much you risk, but you're looking for 50% to 100%. And again, the risk to reward in day trades is different from options because, you know, you could take a trade and, you know, make three times the amount in five minutes. So it's just a different way to do the trade, but you have to have a margin account to do that. Again, the overnights we're doing in options, they have a fixed risk. And that's why I like to do this. Whereas with the swing trade, you don't have the fixed risk. But it is really about the consistency, getting up in the morning, rating your gap, following through the program. I always go to the short side first. If I don't find a good bearish gap first, then I'll go to the long side, okay? So I teach my class in a, 
I teach my system in a class once a month. The class for June is this weekend, June 8th and 9th. I can't believe it's June already. It's crazy how fast this year is going, but I, I do have a June class this weekend if you are interested. It is called the Golden Gap. You will learn the Golden Gap system. The Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade when and what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. That's what counts. That's what matters. If you know something's gonna drop, you're gonna make money. If you know something's gonna rally, you're gonna make money. If you knew Apple would rally today, you would have been in the calls I called. You would have went long. And if you did, you'd be up. So again, I knew that. We were ready in calls before this morning. So that's the whole point. And then again, thinking if the time frame, the timing of this really is something that works for you. But what will you learn in the class? The meat and potatoes of what I do, which is the checklist. So it's a 26 point checklist where I go through, boom, 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 and I rate the gap. I look at a daily chart and I rate it, and this is what you're gonna learn from me. This is what you're gonna learn in the class. This is a whole thing. How did I know Disney would fall? I rated it. It rated that it would fall. So we shorted it and we did puts. And I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for the highest score I can get, and I'm trying to get over 20. So 20 is really the cutoff for me, 20 points or more, and I will take it in the direction of the gap. And again, we're looking for momentum. We're trying to get the fast trade if we can. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. It can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class is this weekend for June, which is $69.99. Class is online. Again, if you want to sign up, you can email me for sign-up forms. I also have a special if you want to do the trends class and the golden gap course this is tuesday you get 500 dollars off if you do two classes and sign up at the same time which is 79.99 for the two classes and again i'm running a summer special which is through this friday um, but you can sign up today and start trading with us tomorrow make money before the class this summer package includes the trading room free through the end of this year the options newsletter free through the end of this year if you sign up for the Golden Gap class by June 7th, which is Friday, and then obviously the class is this weekend, and the class tuition is $69.99. Any questions from anyone here? I see I have a little bit of time, so I might be able to put my charts up. Um, but does anyone have any questions before I do that? How are we doing? Anybody want to go over any stocks? Anybody want me to pull up any charts or look at anything? Looks like I'm done a few minutes early here. Hello, is anyone there? Somebody wrote zero in there. Girl, you just you just explain it way too well. <laughs> what can I say? I could do these webinars, teach my classes, and trade in my sleep. Let me let me pull there up. There you the go.